came on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, welcome. Welcome to a, another midweek service. We hadn't been on in a couple weeks. We had some things that we had to do. And this has truly been an eventful, eventful year. Amen. We were in um, Columbus last week. Had a wonderful time. We talked about the importance of unity and oneness. Amen. And I preach, or I taught there from the premise of teamwork makes the dream work. Amen. We had a great time in the presence of God. Amen. So um, there's a lot of things that's taking place with me, even in my scheduling. Uh, we may be changing our day to a different day. But um, Whatever we decide to do, I want you to know we will continue to do our Bible study. It may be at different times, but if you can't watch it at that time that we designate it while we're kind of like leveling ourselves out, um, I'm taking on some more responsibilities. So uh, my time is, I'm trying to manage my time a little better. But God bless you. I'm so glad that you're able to be here on tonight. Uh, we won't take long. We had um, some things. I was helping some people. I'm always helping people. But um, I just pulled in, got in here real quick, and got all started. Amen. I was just excited to be here. I pray you had a wonderful day. Amen. Pastor Elaine is with me. Say hello, honey. Hi, everybody. Don't y'all want her to be right here next to me? I do. I do, but she won't do it. Amen. And pray for your bishop. You see these gray hairs coming in, amen, all over the place. But God is good. Yes, he is, amen. And his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. We're going to pray, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with our, our teaching for tonight. Um, I, I do want to reiterate, I, I talked about it before, amen, that, hey, people who are having problems with Bible study, you, you need to come, amen. And be a part of the training. Be a part of the study. Amen. I'm taking time to um, assimilate things and bring things together so that we can be um, edifying to you. Edifying. Amen. And, and we found out that um, edifying is the total opposite of eulogy. Because when you have a eulogy, you're speaking well of a person who have passed away or deceased. When we found out, amen, in, this, in our training, amen, that when we edify, we're speaking well of those who are living, amen. So I'm not here to speak to the dead, but I'm talking to the living. And we want to edify you that you may be strong in your walk, and that you will be glorified in God's, in the midst of God's presence on the inside of you. Let him shine. Let Jesus shine. Amen. And that's our goal is to help you to come to your full potential so that what? 
Jesus can shine out of you. Praise God. So let's pray. Father, we pray that the Lord will enlighten the eyes of our heart. Open our heart to the Holy Spirit and allow him to convict us and challenge us to respond to the gospel message even in the message that we're speaking in the book of Romans. Father, we receive for ourselves the truth revealed by the Holy Spirit. Father, show us how that we can put the truth of the letter to the Romans into our into action in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we're going to um, um, go ahead and get started here. And I will say, yeah, it's, it's coming. Um, uh, we're, we're in Romans, and we're just unpacking it. I'm not in a hurry, but we want to make sure that we're getting all of the pieces that we need that we may be empowered, amen, to do the will of God, amen. It's all about um, Him. It's not about us. It's all about doing the will of God. I mean, because see, um, when we're doing his will, when we're seeking to please him, nothing else will matter. Amen. I want you to know that I'm not a politician. Amen. And I never want to be a politician, especially not with the people of God. Amen. But we want whatever we do, we want it to be pure before God, our thoughts to be pure, our motives to be pure. Because sometimes we can do things for a lot of different reasons. But we want to make sure that we're doing things for the right reason. And not just you. I'm saying me. I put myself on first and foremost before you. Amen. That I must judge my heart that I'm doing things for the right motives. Amen. And, and, and not for form or fashion. I love Paul. Amen. Uh, and his writings. And he, he taught. He said, I count everything else as dung i count everything else as just pointless that i may obtain grace to give others the peace of god the love of god to show them how to uh, um come to god amen so i i'm not i don't want them to look at me i don't want them to uh, um, um fancy me for my great speech or in the enticing words of men but i want to move by the spirit and in power and the authority of the holy spirit amen don't you want that authority? Don't you want to move in the anointing of God? When you stand, you know God is with you. When you begin to speak, you know that God is around you and in you. Amen. And that's what keeps us going. That's what keeps you going. It's not because you can do some things or work some things in your own strength. And there are some things we may be able to do in our strength. But at the end of the day, you better know that if God will draw his hand, if he will draw his breath, Amen. We will only be a shell. Glory to God. And I tell you, I don't want to be a shell. Amen. I want to be used of God. So when we look at Romans, the first chapter, the second through the fourth verse, we talked about um, the first two verses. Now we're moving like into the third verse. And, and it says this, the gospel regard, regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God. That's like the second and fourth um, verse together. It, it's kind of paraphrased. I should have just, I can look it up real quick and uh, read it as this. Uh, honey, would you do that for me? Yeah. Uh, Romans uh, 1, 2 through 4. I kind of paraphrase it, but I want to hear it the way it's actually written there um, in the scriptures. I didn't um, write that down in my um, notes one, here. Two, three, yeah, two, through, two, three, and four. So two, three, and four says, which he promised beforehand mm -hmm. through his prophets and yes. the sacred scriptures. Yes. The good news, oops, 
Alright, that's amplified. Oh, she's reading another version. That's okay, you can read that. That's okay. that's fine. Alright. You reading any amplified? Amplified, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, that's 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 good. Alright, the good news regarding mm -hmm. his son. Yes. Who as to the flesh, his human nature was born a descendant of David mm -hmm. to fulfill mm -hmm. the covenant promises. To fulfill the covenant promise. Covenant and promises. As mm -hmm. to his divine nature, mm -hmm. according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated Amen. to be the Son of God yes. with power. Yes, yes. In a triumphant and miraculous way. Amen. By his resurrection from the dead. From the dead. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So it, it, you know, it reads differently in the Amplified, but I wanted her to read that so that we can get kind of a, a premise regarding what we're going to be talking about tonight. See, because in Romans, Paul reveals um, the two relationships of the Lord Jesus Christ that are the key factors to the gospel message, and that's where I should have got a bill. Oh. Amen. See, it's these two relationships of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's two relationships that we're going to be talking about tonight. Amen. And these two relationships, they they are um, uh, encapsulated into two titles that Paul gives Jesus. Amen. And the first title that he gives him is that he is God's son. Amen. So he's God's son. And the second thing that he, that Jesus is, that Paul gave the name, is that he is our Lord. Amen. So it's these two relationships of the Lord Jesus Christ that are the key factors of the gospel message. So the gospel message of power and authority, it, it hangs on these two uh, factions, these two important facts. The first one is that God, he is, Jesus is God's son. He's not here on his own accord, but he is God's son. And the next thing, he is our Lord. Amen. So as our Lord, we know that he's the son of God. Amen. So you make no mistake about it. He's God's son. He is our Lord. So as we look, um, or as we kind of take a look at these two titles and relationships they re and what they re represent. Um, the first thing is Christ's divine relationship is the title um, his son speaks of his relationship to God, his father. I mean, I, I, at one point where he was talking to his, his disciples in the book of John, he said that I and the Father are one. And when you've seen the Father, you also seen me. So he was talking about the relationship as the Son of God. Because the, the, the Pharisees, and they, they didn't believe that he was the Sadducees. And there were others that did not believe that he was God's Son. But I want you to know that Jesus, he was not just a prophet. He was not just a good man. He was not just a do-gooder or a healer. Amen. But Jesus was God's son. And I love it how Paul, you see, he, he, he always, he, he let people know that I'm, he's my Lord. I'm his slave. I'm his bond slave. Or, amen. He talked about the doulos. Amen. That he's, he's the slave for life unto Christ. And because of that, he spoke on the life of Jesus Christ with authority in power and he recognized that he is God's son and John it, it gave us a clear picture as he began to talk John 1 and 1 1 and 2 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God amen so from the very beginning there was Jesus and from the very beginning there was God. There was no separation. Jesus was in the beginning in the creation. Amen. As the world was created, Jesus was right there. He was the Son of God, as well as the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I'll do a, a course study on the beginning, amen, of time. But there's so many symbolisms. There's so many things that took place. Amen. Let there be light. There was words that were spoken. Amen. God spoke the word, but Jesus is the living word. So as God spoke, spoke the word Jesus brought the things to pass amen let there be light 
Amen. Hallelujah. He separated. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit came in when he breathed it into man's nostrils. There's a lot that goes on in, in Genesis. Amen. That we can find and we will see that God, Jesus, is the Son of God of God and that was his first title as the son of God the glorious declaration of the gospel is Jesus is God's son amen. I will go further amen and say Jesus is God yeah. <laughs> amen uh, the next thing Christ's human relationship amen the title our Lord it speaks of the relationship to us his people Amen. He is not uh, a, a a rigid, um, strict God, okay, with no interest in the world He has created. Amen. But He's our Lord, so it's because He is our Lord, He is interested in the things that you are interested in, things that affect you every day, affect me every day. He's interested. He's not rigid and strict and saying he see you going through problems and don't think it doesn't affect him. It does. He cares about our life, the willing and willing, amen, um, to become even involved with us in our greatest need. Or even in our time of need. Now, sometimes when things happen and we forget, you know, that, that God, he, he did it. He made it come to pass. Amen. And sometimes we just think that it was our own strength. Amen. But I want you to know that Christ as Lord. And we talked about this a few weeks ago. And as we become a dulo slave and we're sold out to Christ, he is responsible for everything that concerns you. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we look at, there, there's a link here. The name given to him, uh, Jesus Christ, is the link that makes God's son our Lord. Because without, if, if, if he wasn't the son of God, he could not be our Lord. Amen. So he would not be able to uh, uh, facilitate us in our in our sin condition or our human condition unless he was God. Yeah. Amen. And not and he how was he able to facilitate facilitate us in our human condition because he became one just like us, but he was still God in the flesh. So he was human and he was divine. He was divine because he's the son of God. He was human because he took on flesh and he became our Lord. And he taught us and he showed us how we can live victorious in this life. Now, sometimes we let things um, get, to, get to us, you know, get to our minds. I haven't seen a time where people are just so uh, messed up in the mind of our, as I've seen today. Right. Just every people just just everywhere so easily to be offended and, and and so easily to put up their defenses amen when they don't need to why don't you just learn how to smile I was listening to uh, Kurt Franklin's sound, um, song smile uh, why don't you just smile for a while you look better when you smile amen and I was just listening to that I was at work and I was looking at you know I was listening to the song and, and it brought a smile on my face and it brought joy and, and, and then I looked at the video and they were just dancing saying you look better when you smile you look better when you you look better when you you know and it was talking about um, just the joy of the Lord and sometimes when the last time you just smile and are really thankful for who what God has done in your life amen and we we have challenges we have challenges amen and, and I'm telling you I've been there's so many challenges that I've had to endure even this month just so many my time has been like turned upside down but guess what I'm still getting it all done I'm getting everything done I'm not gonna let anything deter me because the enemy is out to destroy you Amen. And, and, and I, I said something about our mind because in our mind, we talked about it in the conference, we need to be one. But if in our mind, the enemy will come and try to separate us and it starts, it don't start in, it starts in the mind. Amen. And whatever you think, that's what you will become. 
If you think the wrong thing, you're going to get what you're thinking. Amen. So that's why I said we have to guard our mind and guard our heart because our heart says guard our heart with all diligence for out of it flow of the issues of life. Amen. If we allow, if we allow our mind to be messed up and thinking the wrong way, and I call it stinking thinking. Amen. And I'm going to preach that. I may teach on that next week about uh, we need a brainwashing. Because a lot of us, amen, we, we, we get stuff in our mind and we're against this and we're against that. And, and listen, we need to just learn how to just trust God and love one another and come together and to unify. Amen. Because teamwork truly do make the dream work. Amen. I guess I got to preach that at our church. Amen. I did in the conference. But amen. As we understand what it means to come into unity and oneness with the Lord. So the, the name um, given to him, Jesus Christ, is the link that makes God's son our Lord. Because at his conception, the angel Gabriel announced that the name of the promised Savior would be Jesus. Amen. And you can find that in Luke 1, 26 through 38. If you have time, you just go ahead and make a note of that. He was given this name because, watch this, it, des it described his whole purpose for coming. Why? The name Jesus means Savior. The name Jesus means Savior. And you can find that in Matthews 1 and 21. When he named him, said his name shall be called Jesus. Amen. And then the title Christ is not his last name. It's not, we call him it's Jesus Christ, like Christ is his last name. No, Christ isn't Jesus' last name. He don't have a last name. His name was Jesus Christ. And Christ means anointed. So... Jesus Christ is Jesus the anointed. He's Jesus. He's our Savior, and he's anointed of God. You can find that in John 1 and 41. So in the Old Testament, but before I say that, let me just say this. When we talk about um, Jesus as being the anointed of God, amen, we, we, we find, amen, that um, because of who he is amen he, he he causes us to move in a vein move in a a different realm Amen. see we we're, we're stuck in, in this earth realm in this flesh um, condition as long as we're bound to the things that we see the things that we hear the things that we think because everything you see everything you hear everything you think ain't all the time the right thing amen that's why we need faith you, it didn't say um, uh, um, by you seeing, you you know. Thomas saw and he believed because he saw. But Jesus said, uh, um, blessed are they, they who have not seen but yet believe who I am. So the greatest thing isn't so much of what you see, hear, or think, but what you believe. Amen. So as he believed, as we believe on God, we believe on Christ, we become righteous. So in the Old Testament, Oil was poured over the head of one uh, of the ones who were chosen, amen, to be used by God. Now, this anointing with oil was um, a symbol of the Holy Spirit um, coming on him to enable him, amen, to fulfill the task of God that had been given him and I want you to know that anointing is powerful and as we allow the Holy Spirit's anointing to come on us that's what we need to fulfill the things that God has called us and there's something that happens uh, um, when the anointing comes it, when, when, when the, the anointing really comes because see people walk and say they say but they're not really anointed because see when the anointing comes there's a difference in your life my wife and myself, we went at the church on Sunday. We went to see or visit uh, uh, one of the, uh, a, a young lady, amen, I'm not going to say who it was, that was in the hospital, was going through some things, amen. So after we left service, we went there. And on the way in, 
and we had to, you know, we had our clergy on everything. We just went to the hospital, and there was a man in the elevator. Uh, honey, I think you remember. I don't remember what he said, but you heard him. I didn't hear him, but um, he had these tattoos all over his arm and everything. So, you know, I looked at him. I said, "Wow, he, those are those nice tattoos," you know. And he and he looked. And he said, "Oh, okay." He said, "Thank you." He said, "I got these when I was in prison." I said, "Oh, okay, okay, good. I got you. I got that." And I said, um, "I said, how you doing now? Everything okay with you? You know?" And we were just concerned and just talking to him. And he said, "Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago, but I'm, I'm good." I said, "Great, hey, amen. I'm glad that that you're doing good. Sometimes it can be difficult when you come and try to re uh, um, introduce yourself back into society after that. That can be pretty challenging." He said, "Yeah, it, it, it was, but he said I make it." He said, "But thank you." for um saying that and um what did he say honey yes, after thank that you for, uh, walking as an example oh and he totally said something that i didn't expect he said well thank you he's told us thank you for walking as an example to others and and i didn't say that to um to to um boost us up but i'm saying that as children of god people need to see the love of God and we have to be concerned with people and don't be so judgmental you know I could have looked at him and say oh he you know he need to get saved he got them tattoos that ain't even part of who God is and that you know but we have to be careful that we don't get to that place because you don't know how people gotten where they were you weren't all the way good all your life amen so he allows us when the Holy Spirit comes he fortifies you he strengthens you it don't bother me I don't want to be a around it if I don't have to be but if somebody just start cussing I'm not going to be oh don't be cussing in front of me I mean listen you're going to hear it you're going to see stuff you know but we have to be lions we have to be able to, to still stand strong and hold the standard up even when people are doing crazy things all around us the things that we see all around us amen we still have to hold the standard of holiness why because of the anointing Amen. And really, you need to be able to be in a place where you can minister to people. When we were out of town, uh, two times we went in a restaurant, and I, I ended up praying for a whole family in what's that? Um, um, in the Waffle House. We came in after service to get something to eat. It was so many people in there. We were just standing outside waiting to get in. So when I came in, you know, one of the ladies, I don't know, they were talking to people and they said, hey, this is a bishop or whatever. I don't know what they said to him, but he called me. I came over. I said, hey, God bless you. How you doing? Said, this your family? And he, what'd he say? The church that came in the house. Yeah, he said the church that came in the house. It was just five or six of us, amen. But it was full of everybody else, amen. And I saw him and we began to talk. And I said, can I pray for you? He said, yes. He said, please pray for me. He had tattoos. He had um, piercing in his nose and his ears. But listen, that didn't mean anything to God, amen. He wanted to bless him. And then he said, I came and we got all these people with us. We want you to pray for them too. I said, well, amen. We can do that. Can I anoint you? Amen. Because we're talking about the anointing. And I got the oil. And he said, wow, yeah, please anoint me. <laughs> And I got that oil. My adjective was there. She had oil in there because I didn't have my briefcase, but she kept kept some. And she gave me the oil. I took the oil, amen, and I put it on in here. And I prayed, and he put his hands up, amen, and we blessed him. We blessed his family. We blessed the children. We blessed everybody, amen. We called him to, to come to himself. And I said, give him an opportunity to get to know you, Lord, amen, in the name of Jesus. We weren't being judged. Mental, amen. I didn't tell him he need to get saved. No, I said, Lord, bless him, amen. See, we we so hard, amen, that on, we forget what we're called to do. And when I'm talking about the anointing, we're talking about Jesus was anointed everywhere Jesus went. Guess what? He was praying for everybody. Right. 
He was there for every. He didn't care if this person was a prostitute because they came. Prostitutes came. People that was dirty. Um, people who had leprosy that nobody could touch that had to be on the outside. Amen. Of the city. People who were blind. We. God needs us. He needs to anoint us to go out. Amen. And preach to these people to, to lay hands on them. Bring them peace because they're tormented. This man in the elevator, you don't know how tormented he may have been. This this guy that was sitting in the restaurant, amen, we came in, he may have been tormented. But because he had his servants there, amen, and we were all praying, amen, inside of the restaurant. We weren't praying, praying all low, oh, Lord bless. No, we were praying, amen, and laying hands on them and decreeing and declaring the kingdom of God, of God to come and that his will would be done in the midst of the earth. Our, that ain't just the evangelist job that's all of our jobs amen so as we have the anointing it makes the difference it fortifies you yeah. it strengthens you yeah. it gives you piety or it cause you to be pity have pity and mercy on those who may not know what you know Amen. So he gives us the Holy Spirit and the anointing. I know I just had to say that about how important it is to walk in the anointing. Yeah. Yeah. You may have people yeah. around you saying and doing everything and anything. But guess what? You don't have to make them know. Never mind. You know, you do what God has called you to do. And you keep being that light. Keep being that salt. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So in Luke 4, 18 and 21 through 21, it says Jesus made a statement that staggered, staggered his hear hearers. Amen. Those who were all around him. So he came to church, right? Because Jesus went to church. Sometimes we don't think we need to go to church. But if Jesus went to church, you need to go to church. <laughs> I know people uh, people have all kind of thoughts about everything, but Jesus went to church. So here he is. One day he was at church, right? And he was in there preaching and whatnot. And then he would, they gave him a book to read. And then he got the book, right? And he turned to to, to turn in a book. Amen. I think it's in Isaiah 61 where, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointing me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He proclaimed freedom to the captive and to release a, um, um, the prisoners from prison. Amen. And proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Lord, amen or the year of favor amen and then while all of them was watching him he made this declaration that was cold-blooded amen Jesus said this day this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing <laughs> man they got so bad they wanted to throw him over a cliff amen he decreed that he was the son of God Amen. And he gave them his resume. I can't. And he wrote, he read it right out to scriptures. And then he was telling them in so, in so many words, this is talking about me. Wow. He was saying, this is talking about me. So wow. Jesus, I mean, man, we was just like Jesus was. Man, hey, he didn't take no prisoners. Listen, he, he gave them the word. And not only did he give it give him the word but he loved them even when they hated him and they wanted to kill him he still kept loving them amen and he when they tried to set him up amen with different things and these foolish questions amen he had an answer for every question and when you are anointed listen when you really anointed you will have an answer for every question wow. because it's the wisdom of the holy spirit I've looked at people who had uh, been in situations where they, their faith was challenging. When they say, well, you don't believe this. Or they try to say, well, why do you believe that? And why do you believe that? And then they sit up and they stumble over it. Oh, well, it, it's okay to have this. And it's, uh, and, and, and it's okay to go have a car and the, and the money. And, 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 and they're questioning these preachers. And they're, they're stumbling over their words. And I'm looking at them. What is wrong with you? Stand in what you know. Amen. If somebody try to judge me on this or judge me on that, give them a word of wisdom about why you do what you do. When you think you bad, you think you something that uh, um, because you uh, um, do this, that, and you, you don't smoke, so you think you better than me. No, I'm not better than you. 
Amen. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Amen. And the same problems that you got to go through that I know you may be struggling with right now, I have to struggle through too. But the thing, the difference between me and you, I have somebody to go through the struggle with me. Amen. And it's bad choice because you can have the same person to go through the struggle with you that I have. Amen. So instead of taking it the wrong way, turn it around and make it a blessing for somebody else. Right. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you just what to say, when to say it, how to say it, and he'll put his put the, his his super on it. He'll put his super on our natural. Amen. And it becomes supernatural. Why? Because he put his super on our natural. All we have is something natural. But when he put his hand on it, amen. I know that we are dirt and we're just dust. But when God blows his breath upon us, amen, we become some awesome dirt. Amen. I'm dirt, but because of him, I can become awesome dirt. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. <laughs> Amen. And see, when we talked about Jesus, the Christ, I I'm, I'm, I failed to mention this, but I, I want to mention it now, is that whenever there was a son born, especially the oldest son, the oldest son always had the name of the father. Amen. He always had the name of the father. Even Zechariah, when he, when he, when John was born, Amen. And they said, "What you going to name him, Zechariah?" And they said, and "They said, no, he's going to name him John." And, and Zechariah was, he was on death, Amen. Because uh, up until the time John was born, but then they, then uh, they tried to say, "Well, no, you got, he's got to be named after his father, Amen." So no, so when he was born, he said his name will be John. He said, there's no John. His mother said, they said, there's no John. And who's, who is named after? Who is John? Amen. It came from the Lord. He was the beloved of God. Amen. Praise God, the forerunner. But, but Jesus was the Christ. Amen. His father was named Joseph. See how it went against the grain. So when they look at that, amen, it, 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 it kind of scrambled their grits. They kind of missed it because they're so used to their traditions, amen, and the things that they did. And let's not be caught up in our tra the traditions of men and things have to be look a certain way and people have to act a certain way and listen to certain kind of music and things. Now, there's only so many things I'm going to listen to, but I don't judge people when they when it's something that's pure and clean. Now, I'm not going to be sitting up listening to a bunch of cussing and a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with God and they're singing and they're putting in these Christian songs. I don't I may not want to hear it, amen. But something that's wholesome, amen, something may have a beat. I listen to stuff with a beat. I ain't boring now. Amen. I do like music, but you know, there's certain things about the Holy Spirit that you can enjoy, amen. Like I was talking about that song Smile by Kirk Franklin. I like a lot of his stuff. Amen. And some people don't like any of his stuff. Amen. But watch this. Because of who we are, we can be edified. And whatever is going to edify you, it's good for you. Right. right. Amen. Right. So, um, his interpretation of that passage was nothing less than, I am. When I said Jesus said, amen, that this has been fulfilled before you. His interpretation was, I am the anointed one of whom Israel was speaking. Amen. So, they, they knew the word. They knew the Torah. And when they, they knew it was talking about the Messiah to come, they knew it was talking about, amen, the one that the anointing of the anointing of God or the anointed prophet of God that was about to come. But they didn't believe he was him. <laughs> he didn't, they didn't believe that Jesus, I know that's not good language, but they didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But he was letting them know right there, I'm the Messiah. I'm who you've been waiting on. Woo. Glory to God. Jesus was bad, wasn't he? He didn't have to live, raise his voice. He didn't have to look mean or nothing, but he just told them the truth. Amen. So Jesus was indeed anointed by God, but he was anointed for a specific purpose to bring what the good news. Let's break it down. Let's unpack it. Let's unpack um, Isaiah um, 61. The first thing he said, 
that he was there to bring the good news to the poor. Now, y'all, this is Bible study, okay? So we're, we're in Bible study. So we're, we're studying the word of God. Amen. So when Jesus said was indeed anointed by God, but he was anointed for a specific purpose. And here it is. To first, the first thing he was anointed to do is to bring good news to the poor. And it's funny how we'll do everything for people who, you got people who have money and we still give them free stuff. Have you noticed that? That when a person is, a, if Beyonce and, and Jay-Z came into a restaurant, they could sit down and eat and they won't even charge them nothing just because it's Jay-Z and Beyonce. Amen. But then there's a poor people outside that need some help. We, we'll kick them down the curve. And if they came in, they'll get arrested. We live in a, in a generation, amen, that when somebody don't need, those are the ones we'll make a way for, amen. And then the ones that are struggling, the babies or those who don't have a good job or may not have a place to live, may not have food, amen. We just walk past them, oh, they're just trying to use you. I've heard so many people say, oh, they probably got a Cadillac or a Mercedes in, a, in, a, in, in, in behind the building, so you give them that dollar or that 50 cent is making them rich. And I don't know how you getting rich off of a dollar or 50 cent. Amen. I don't know how you're going to get rich to drive a Mercedes with a hundred dollars. Amen. But that's our mentality. And then we become desensitized to people who may really need help. Because we're so judgmental. Amen. If the Lord lay, a, lay on my heart to give somebody something, I'll give it to him. If he doesn't lay on my heart to do it, I won't do it. Amen. But it's not like I'm judging him based on what I see with my eyes. Never do that. Because you don't know what anybody is going through. I lost my job years ago, a few years ago, about three years ago, amen, and, and we didn't have nothing else coming in, amen, my wife was working a little part-time job, amen, so we went and applied for food stamps, and we went and applied for this, guess what, we got zero, they said, you make too much money, I lost my job, I'm not making money, right? well, based on the last 15 years, you've been making this, that, and the other, so we refuse you for stamps, we refuse you for food, we refuse you for everything, they judge me, based on something that they saw from the past right. never do that we made it because god made a way for right, us right, right. for the whole time amen however sometimes we, we go through some things but i learn from everything i go through i learn Amen. I'm seeing people who ain't never worked in their life um, have food stamp, got Section 8, got this, got all kind of this, that, and the other. And they're just living off of the money, the taxes that I've been paying. They're free medical, free everything. Here I am, been working all my life paying for everybody else's stuff that's, um, that's doing this cheating the system. And when it was time for me to receive from the system, the system wasn't there to help us. Right. Amen. So be careful. You, you don't know what people are going through. You, you never know. You never know. So uh, he, he was talking about bringing the good news to the poor. Amen. See, uh, uh, he, at the synagogue, uh, it was a Jewish place for gathering for prayer. Amen. And, and the instruction of God's law. But then there was also a temple. The temple was a place where sacrifices was made, where the priests made sacrifices unto the people. Amen. So, but in the synagogue, this is where Jesus, where they got together. Amen. And this is where Jesus began to let them know who he really were, was. Amen. See, the, the poor refers not so much to those who are lacking in uh, material goods and this is what Jesus this is a message he was saying but rather to those who are downtrodden and are oppressed and what are you oppressed and sometimes it's by the society but do you know that sometimes it's oppressed and downtrodden by other people so that's why we have to be careful he said I came Jesus said I came to those Amen. Uh, uh, who are, are are broken? Who are poor? I came to 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 help the poor. Amen. Those who may not have, I, I came to bring them some good news. 
that it's not going to last always and I'm with you and I'm going to take care of you. Amen. So he came from the poor. Amen. To strengthen them. Those who are poor in spirit. Those who are poor. Amen. But yet they still have faith to believe that God will make a way out, for, out of no way for them. There's some rich people that really love God. But their heart is poor. They have a poor spirit because they're so worried and concerned about the money that, wow, they, they can't have any peace. He even came for those people. Amen. And he's going to let them know, amen, that, hey, you can have some peace if you help um, Bishop over there. Amen. He's going to bring you some peace. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm just saying that he, there's, there's ways that God will use you. Has he ever used you and told you to do something? Amen. That don't bring no light to yourself. See, because we that's that's another key. See, when you do something, you 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 don't have to do it where everybody knows. See, a poor person, when you do something for them, they appreciate. But everybody don't need to know everything that you do. Amen. You do it as unto God. Amen. Sometimes the person don't even need to know what you're doing, but you have to let God lead you and you have to be led by the spirit so while physical poverty is included amen uh in that which jesus was talking about he specifically referred to those who were poor in spirit like the the people who we ran into in the restaurant like the guy we ran into sunday in the elevator they may not have been poor um just physically poor but poor in spirit they or in other words they were lacking a spiritual life with the lord isn't that wonderful mm -hmm. <sighs> for you know that grace of our lord jesus christ that through, though he was rich christ he owned everything he walked on gold amen hallelujah yet for your sake and for my sake he became poor that we may become rich amen and, and again i'm not talking just about physical richness and, and money but rich in spirit i love a person that has a rich loving spirit i have a pastor that i'm going to be ministering at his church in at the end of the month in, um, in pittsburgh Man, he is so full of joy. Uh, and I'm talking to him. We can't talk for 15 minutes and both of us are laughing. He just has this effectual laugh. And it's just, we just have fun and fellowship together. We'll call and I'm talking to him on the phone. Before you know it, I'm cracking up, amen. And, and, we're, and, and we're not cracking jokes, but we're just enjoying each other and enjoying, amen, the presence of God. Amen. And I, I just love talking to him. Amen. And every time I talk to him, he lifts my spirit. And he says the same thing about me. But I say, man, you lift my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, um, just the, the good news. He said, I came to bring the good news to the poor so that through, po through his poverty, we might be made rich. Amen. The good news to the poor is the, the essence of of the gospel and those who are absolutely and have absolutely nothing to give God gives his grace and he gives the grace that Christ has extended to us yeah. amen and so you don't have to have anything to give amen but he gives amen based on his mercy upon upon his grace the riches of the mercies of god in christ has made has been made available to every person amen to every person so you never know who you're going to be walking by who you're going to be talking to but you have to understand as the anointing when we talked about the anointing and we're the anointed of god because the anointing is on the inside of us because he's on the inside. Uh, is it uh, um, Philemon 1 and 6? That the communication of our faith will become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. Yeah. He's that good thing that's on the inside of you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's time to let that good thing out. Because <laughs> people need it. People, people need the grace of God 
that's over your life. Now I looked at my watch. I have a lot more to do. I'm going to have to do a part two and maybe even a part three to this because it's just so power packed. You see my notes I got here, I Pastor. So um, yeah, I'll get I'll get through more today um, next time because I kind of camped out at a few places there, Amen. So um, now we're going to do our questions. I only have three questions and we're we're out of time, so I'm, uh, we're going to do that real simple. Hopefully you were um, paying attention, Amen, to what I was saying, and I'm praying that you're really taking it to heart because this is the Word of God. This is how we learn about him amen get out of your flesh grow up stop whining stop crying about everything it ain't that bad and sometimes he allow us to go through things so he can grow us up sometimes you need a whooping you need somebody to say something and just shut you down amen so and sometimes we don't like we don't like that kind of talk but sometimes you need to just shut up and listen and grow up and stop complaining so much. Amen? Because God's been good. Truly he has. Amen. So here, here, I'm, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna beat you too bad tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. But here, let's let's go. Our first question is what are the two relationships of the Lord Jesus Christ that are the key factors to the gospel message? There's two relationships. I'm sorry, honey. What are the two relationships of the Lord Jesus Christ that are the key factors to the gospel message? There's two relationships about our Lord in relationship to us, amen, to who he is, amen, that is key factor or it's a key factor to the gospel message. What are those two things? It's two things I told you at the beginning. He's this and he's that, amen, to us. So what are those two relationships that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ that are the key factors to the gospel message? I know there's a delay. Okay, so time is said, up. He is God's son and he is our Lord. Amen, Sister Venus. God bless Elder you. Regina said, our, He is God's son and he is our Lord. All right. Who said that? Elder? Elder. Elder. God bless you, Elder. Sister Venus, Elder. Elder. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to stop. <laughs> she likes playing um, the music. Minister Lex said, uh, uh, God's son, son of God, and our Lord. Amen, minister elect. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Okay. So, right. so the answer is God's son and our Lord. Those are the two relationships of the Lord Jesus that are the key factors to the gospel message. He's According to his, his gospel message, he is the son of God. Amen. And because he's the son of God, he's our Lord. And that's the good news that our Lord, amen, through God has made a way for us in our human condition to come to Christ, to come to God, amen, and be saved. Amen. Because he's the son of God. He's the only one that had a, um, who made a purchase, who made a sacrifice for us. Not a purchase, but a sacrifice that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. Amen. So the next question, what does the title Christ means? What does the title Christ mean? Give you a few minutes while well, she's playing the music again. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord God. What does the title Christ mean? One going once, going twice. 
All right. Elder. Elder. The anointed one. Anointed one. Anybody Minister else? Elect. Minister elect. Anointed to bring good news. Anointed to bring good news. Good what? Good anyone good else? Man. Venus. Anointed. All right, Sister Venus. Anointed. Anyone else? Amen. So, the title Christ means the anointed. All right? So, Christ wasn't his last name because people say Jesus Christ. No, his name was Jesus the anointed one. Anointed. So, the word Christ means anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are little gods and we are little Christ. And what are we? We are his little anointed children. Amen. We're anointed to do a work on his behalf. Amen. Praise God. So that's good. Everybody got it. Anointed. So, amen. The next question and the last question. What does the name Jesus mean? What does the name Jesus mean? What does the name Jesus mean? You playing your music, honey? Yeah, I'm trying to get to play more. What does the name Jesus mean? Amen. He does not want to play. I guess it got tired. Okay. Oh, don't sing it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So she's over there singing it. So okay, I, I give you anyway. give you a couple Elder give you a couple. Said Savior. Amen. Elder said Savior. Said Savior. And Minister Elect Minister said, said Savior. Amen. Genesis Road said Savior. Oh, this is Genesis. Hi, Genesis. She said Savior. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else? I think that's it. Amen. Amen. I know there's somewhat of a delay, and I know some people are going to come on later. I know they got it, but the word Jesus means Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Beautiful. Well, that's going to complete our um, Bible study. I have more. Amen. But I, I'm, I'm real mindful of your time. Amen. And we want to just try to um, give you a bite size of an hour. I think that's that's long enough. Amen. To uh, sit down and just kind of enjoy the word. So thank you for coming and enjoying the word with me. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know again. Amen. That hey, teamwork makes the dream work. Amen. So as we, amen, I pray that you had a wonderful time tonight. I, and I'm praying that if there's someone that's listening, that know of not Christ, amen, that you will come to know him, amen, he's easy, and he loves, he's loving, and he don't care where you came from, he don't care, I mean, tattoos you got, he don't care about what you've done in the past, or that, because when you come to him, he'll make a new creature out of you, if you just give your heart to him, amen, and trust him, and have faith to believe, Amen. For with the mouth confession is made, but with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and the mouth confessions are made unto salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that thou shalt be saved. Amen. So we just believe God, repent. You got to repent. Repent of your sin. Ask the Lord to come into your heart, and he'll do it, amen, and make your heart his home. So, Father, I pray for everyone tonight over the airways, oh God, that are listening, those, oh God, that are in their homes. I pray that you will bless them. I pray that you will touch the mind of the people, Lord God. I pray that you will give them, oh God, the understanding, oh God, the wisdom, the tenacity to, Lord God, believe you, to let go of anything, oh God, these isms and schisms and see the true matter of life is to trust you in all of our ways oh god acknowledge you and you said that you would direct our path in jesus name so have your way this day god strengthen us oh god by your mighty power and your outstretched stretch hand i pray for healing i pray, pray for deliverance 
I pray for a yoke breaking anointing to break every yoke and silence every mouth of every demonic force that speaks against you. In Jesus' name, we speak life. We speak life. Hallelujah. We speak life. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Have a wonderful night and know that you are his and he's yours. Amen. And it's a wonderful thing to walk with the Lord. God bless you. Amen. And I'll see you on next week. And some of you, come and see us on Sundays. We're at 11 o'clock. We start service. Amen. Actually, 1030. We start with reading the Bible. Amen. And we have a powerful worship, praise and worship. And we just love on God. Amen. And we get a, a powerful anointed word that the Holy Spirit himself prepares. Amen. For you. Amen. Just for you. God bless you. And I'll see you soon. And if I don't see you on this side, I'll see you on the other side. In Jesus' name, amen.